Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. So today it's all about XRP and uh, what is going on in that realm. If you don't know or haven't seen my video, I had sold all of my XRP. And the reason why I sold all my XRP, it wasn't just because of the SEC case. It wasn't just because of the am amount of pressure that was coming on as far as like selling. It was because really of two reasons. One is I needed tax breaks because I have multiple businesses and it's always good to have tax breaks. And what's great about cryptocurrency is that there's this thing called wash trading in the traditional markets. And uh, that is a big no-no. That is where you will actually sell your security or your stocks or whatever you got. And you will uh, realize that loss and you will immediately buy them back. And you will take that tax loss, use it on your taxes, but then get your... Um, Get your stocks or whatever that you that you had before right back, and it's kind of a uh, a weird way to do things, but it's super effective for tax losses. Now, here's the great thing: uh, in cryptocurrency, there is no rule against that. So uh, remember, cryptocurrency is uh, deemed as property. So I just use that little loophole to uh, get some tax losses, and it worked out pretty well for me. Now, uh, when I did this video, I think when people saw the thumb, they were like, "Ah, this guy." He's always talking about how stubborn he is and what he's never going to sell. And, and look at them, weak hands and da-da-da. So sure, all right. But uh, just so you know, uh, as soon as I sold, I bought right back in. So I sold like around 19, 20 cents or something like that because, you know, it was a fantastic opportunity. I had bought in 2017 and 2018 uh, somewhere around, uh, I think the highest I ever paid was like 295 or something like that. It was, it was pretty high. And then I remember going to like $1.70. I'm like, whoo, what a deal. And I remember when I went to 75 cents, I was telling all my friends, you gotta, you got to buy XRP because this is the lowest we will ever see it. Eh, so there we are. Anyhow, so uh, yeah, I bought back in. So I still have XRP and I still want it to do well. And I don't want to poo-poo over everybody and like uh, rain anybody's parade because it sucks, especially if you, you know, really put your heart and soul into it. And, uh, you know, you really believe and it is a, it is a vibrant community to, to get all these things. So it's just, a, just an awful thing. So what I was going to talk about today is uh, two things. Well, actually three things. First of all, uh, the price is up to 23 cents, so that is always good news. Uh, the next thing is that um, I don't know where the price is going to go because I am not Nostradamus. But I know a lot of people will, will predict where it's going to go. I tend to think it's going to go on the lower side, especially in mid-January when things start to stop cease trading and delisting. Some places are delisting, some people are just stop trading. But remember that is only in the United States uh, because it is only here. Now globally, uh, you can do whatever you want to, uh, especially in all these different, uh, uh, different countries, European Union, uh, Southeast Asia. Sure, you can do what you want. Uh, you can still trade, still market makers and everything else. The thing that I see or I really want to see is the way that Brad Garlinghouse explained it, which was that 95% of all the trades and all the functionality and everything that makes uh, XRP so great is outside the United States. So I'm curious to see what happens when just the American exchanges just totally shut it down and we can't do anything here. So I'd like to see what the price does. If the price stays at tw around 20 cents, well, hey, you know what? That, that's, that's a pretty good, that's a great sign for the strength of, uh, of XRP and what is going on. Uh, it'll be a testament to what Brad says. Now, if the opposite happens and it just starts to tank and goes to like a nickel, then that'd be something else. But we have to explore that when it happens and no one really knows and that's just how it is. So that is the first thing, or the first and second thing. The third thing I wanna talk about is this. There is a website, petitions.whitehouse.gov. If you are an XRP holder, I think this is a fantastic site to go to because uh, they need uh, almost 71,000 signatures by January 28th. And what they are doing is they are having this petition signed so it can go off and uh, to uh, the powers that be and have your voices heard and say, hey, this is XRP is a currency, it is not a security, and uh, I'm signing this petition and I want you to listen to me because that's what the United States is based on, right? It's supposed to be uh, that thing. So we will see. So this is exactly what it says. Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission is tasked to protect investors in U.S. securities. It, however, has filed frivolous action claiming the cryptocurrency XRP, which has already been deemed a currency by FinCEN and a lot of other places throughout the, uh, the world to be a security. Uh, or sorry, uh, not a security. Due to this action, the $40 billion market for the currency is rapidly failing 
as companies scramble to maintain compliance. Billions of dollars of value is being wiped from the market in rapid succession, and most critically, hundreds of thousands of ordinary Americans uh, are suffering. And that is, I think, the biggest thing right here, is that uh, there's a lot of people that really took it on the chin and just said, you know what, I'm going all in on XRP and everything else be damned. Now, that's not my thing. I'm always uh, about uh, diversification. Even I, even I think, you know, uh, Bitcoin is going to do great, but I still own other things. So really, it just comes down to what is your level of um, safety or what is your feeling as far as where XRP is going to go? If you think like XRP is going to be that $589 token, sure. I mean, it could have, I don't know. It's cryptocurrency. I have no idea. If you think it's going to be $5 by the end of this bull run, sure, okay. I mean, it could. Who knows? But in, in my best guess, I really do think that we have bull runs and they go in cycles. And they're every four years. Um, it all starts off with a halving. And it's the same thing. 2012, a, a halving. 2013, all-time high. 2014, a enormous dip. Uh, 2015 is a reset. 2016 is a halving. 2017, an all-time high. 2018 is a monstrous dip. 2019 is a reset. 2020, the one we just left, was the halving. 2021 is setting ourselves up for a monster uh, bull run. And it usually takes about a year. Uh, court cases, they don't usually uh, get taken care of very quickly. Uh, I should know. Mine took three years. So it's just one of those things where uh, maybe it could get wiped up away. Maybe it could. But I think for this bull run, I don't think it's, it's going to happen. And if it does happen, it'll be at the very, very tail end. And I just don't know how much it's going to be. During that time, I think there's a lot of great projects out there. Um, you know, I've invested in a lot of different things, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, uh, EOS and Polkadot and, and Voyager and Celsius, because I don't really know what, which one it is. And uh, I just don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I mean, there's a lot of like uh, Bitcoin maximalists out there, like, you know what, everything else is trash. That's all you're going to get. I mean, sure. But uh, I, I don't really believe that. So this, I think, is the time right now is to do a couple of things. Uh, take a look at what you got. And if you believe it, go and stick with, with, with what you have and just go that route. Uh, if you believe in XRP, then they're, I'm going to link this in the description. Uh, they need a lot more signatures. Right now, they have, uh, actually, they need 100,000, excuse me, and they, they only have 30,000. So if you want to send that petition, I'm going to link that in the description uh, below. And also, the last thing I want to talk about is your IRA. So if you have an IRA like myself, and there are multiple crypto IRAs out there, I personally just happen to use iTrust IRA. I like them. I like the people there. They onboard me pretty quickly, and I think it's pretty reasonable. I just like them, and I personally use them. So, uh, well, actually, there's two things. First of all, if you still want to contribute to your IRA, you have until, I think, April or May, but you can still contribute for 2020 still uh, in this year. It's just one of those great rules that has come up. But one of the things that is a problem is that because... IRAs are for um, Americans. There's, there, there's different things th throughout the globe, but we're talking about just IRAs. That's why I trust works in the USA. With this XRP ruling, you have to understand that you cannot trade your XRP after January 8th within your iTrust. So I'm going to read everything to you and try to answer all your, all your questions here. So I trust capital and liquidity providers. That is the big thing. Liquidity providers. It's not just I trust going, we don't want to do it. They got to depend on, on these liquidity providers. And those liquidity providers are like, look, we don't know what's going on. And uh, we can't provide this liquidity because we don't know it's going to be a security. We'll wait till after uh, this, uh, this lawsuit. So this is what they, they, they put out this, this press release. And they said, look, actually, no, it's not a press. It's from the blog post. They said, we've worked closely with industry-leading liquidity providers with hopes of continuing to service the XRP community. Great. We are not an exchange and require liquidity providers to service client trading needs. Unfortunately, uncertainty around the regulatory status of XRP caused all, all of our U.S.-based liquidity partners to suspend XRP trading without the coming weeks. Uh, as a result, trading of XRP will not be available after Friday, January 8th, and may cease earlier as required by our liquidity providers. So what does this mean? What does this mean right here? If you can't trade your XRP, 
Can you just not buy any more XRP? Can you not put it in an IRA? Yes. Uh, also, can you not trade it right now? No. So let me, let me talk about this. The great thing about an IRA is, especially with, with, with iTrust, because not only do you have cryptocurrencies, you can also do precious metals, golds, and silvers, which is cool for me because I yeah, own all, all of those things. Within your IRA account, you can trade that as much as possible. You can take profits. Um, like if you had Bitcoin, like, like, like I do, uh, you could have taken profits uh, from Bitcoin and just reinvested into your IRA. And it's totally tax-free, which is the best thing of all time. Um, there's just different requirements. If you want to take a look at the video about IRAs, crypto IRAs specifically, look in the description below. There's a link, looks just like this. And there's a video, it's about 18 minutes, 20 minutes, somewhere around there, and it explains the ins and outs and how it all works. So, uh, just to reiterate, um, you can trade within your IRA account, but you need to do it with XRP before January 8th, because after that, uh, they cannot allow that to happen because of what is going on. All right, so clients can freely trade XRP on our platform. Our platform supports cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, gold and silver. You can review the complete list on our website. I'll give you the link to the website. Um, so that's one option. You can, you can trade your XRP, but you can only trade until the 8th of January. After that, they have to stop the, the, the whole trading process because of liquidity providers. Another option is, if you say, you know what, I want to trade squat. I know exactly where it's going. I know what I got, no doubt, right? You can continue to hold XRP without guaranteed liquidity. Um, so you can hold it all the way through the whole thing and just say, you know what, I don't know what's going to really happen with this and I, don't really, I think it's going to go my way. So cool, just stay as it is and just don't touch it. You just can't add any more XRP. You can't buy any more. You can't put in any more uh, into your IRA. But uh, of course, you won't have the ability to trade. And the third option is distribution. And I'm, gonna, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. But if you want them to distribute your XRP to you, say, you know what? I want to take my XRP. I'm going to put it on my ledger, and I want to trade it someplace else. Here's the thing. If you do that as a taxable event, and uh, once you take it out of your IRA, you're going to pay some pretty hefty penalties. And that's XRP, that's Bitcoin, that's Ethereum, that's any cryptocurrency, that's any metal, anything else. Because if you're taken out before the age of 59 and a half, you're going to pay penalties. So that's up to you and uh, talk with your accountant on that one. I just not going to do that. All right. And then there's a big question that I thought was pretty important, which is what about my flare tokens this was a great one and i've gotten this question and thankfully they answered it for me so it states if you previously qualified for the spare token distribution event based on the snapshots no actions needed remember you had to have uh, xrp in a specific wallet and then flare would would uh, take a snapshot and say these people have xrp and they would give it to you one to one or one to two whatever it is that they're going to do so that's good it's all taken care of if you did qualify based on the snapshots and now choose to sell your XRP before January 8th, you are still qualified to receive the Spark Flare distribution. So that's pretty cool. So if, if they noticed that you had Spark in there and you sell, no big deal, because you had it at that point when it was actually, uh, that snapshot was taken. So fantastic, all right? And then it's the last one, will you turn XRP trading back on? They said, yes. If exchanges restart XRP trading with the US, based clientele, I trust will swiftly integrate to our platform. And as long as this uh, is taken care of with the SEC, then yes, we will definitely turn this back on. So there it is in a nutshell. And be before I sign off, I just want to make a last comment, which is maybe XRP is going to do great in the future. I mean, hey, it, look, uh, when I had to transfer things around, uh, XRP was by far the fastest. It was the smoothest one to use. It was done in like seconds. And I loved it. Uh, as far as like, I mean, if you ever try to do a wide transfer, it sucks. So <clears throat> XRP, if you've ever used like Ethereum, especially right now with those crazy fees, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So XRP is great. It's a great product. <laughs> and I hope, it, I hope it works out. The problem here is, <coughs> excuse me, is if you have this XRP right now, and you hold it all the way through, what are you missing out on in 2021 if you don't want to buy anything else? Say, so, you know what, I don't want to buy it. I, I just want to stick with XRP, or I just want to keep adding my bags, whatever. You can do that. 
fine. But look at how much we have gained in just this last week alone. Look at all the different institutions that have already come in. Look at the amount of uh, percentage increases and all the different advancements uh, for a lot of the, the top 100 cryptocurrencies digital assets that are out there. If you don't want to be a part of this, then that's fine. You want to sit in the silence and go, I'm going to wait for the SEC uh, to go through this lawsuit because I know for a fact Ripple and XRP are going to win and I am 100% sure. That's fine. You can do that. But uh, I will just say this, and this is on um, the actual information that they gave me as far as I trust. Just know this. While there is no way to predict the future, there is a potential outcome that XRP ends up being Marcus security. And while business can continue internationally, those who hold it inside of their IRAs, any IRA, any IRA in the United States, doesn't matter what company it is, if you hold in your IRA right now and haven't sold it, moved it around, you will never have the ability to ever sell it. So if it is deemed a security and you have it in an IRA, this is one of those laws, it was an unregistered security and you can't do anything with it. It is now null and void. So that is only if you have it in an IRA. So again, the question is to you, do you want to hold it? Do you think for 100% certain that yes, uh, whatever I have in it of XRP, and it could be 10 XRP, it could be 10 million XRP in, in this IRA that you have, or any IRA. Just leave it there, and I'm sure it's going to work out. But what if it doesn't? What if they come back and say, this is the security, and we don't care about, you know, uh, any kind of reality <laughs> or whatever, and then it's like, you know, we're going to split the security. Now you just lost everything. So this is only for IRAs. If you have it in your ledger, if you have it on your specific wallet, this doesn't apply to you. Uh, it'll be a different, different circumstance, but only for IRAs, you have to really make that decision now. All right, so that is it. So thanks for uh, listening to me, uh, for or watching this all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If uh, you like these types of videos, be two months gonna pop up on your left and right. And uh, thanks for sticking with me as for the new microphone. I had a new one yesterday, a lot of echo, so we went back to the old wired one. I know people say, you know there's uh, non-wired Yes, I do. And guess what? They all suck. So that's it. All right. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.